What is going on everybody and welcome to part 4 of our fun with Neural Networks tutorial series. In the last tutorial we began simplifying our input vector here, but we left off with the understanding that hey this is a character level generation model, a generative model, and really everything is a string. Uh, so we don't actually have to adhere to any array or any other structure at all. We can change this to be anything we want. So let's make some of those changes and then build our training set and then hopefully all in the same tutorial begin training and see what we can come up with. So uh, to begin and actually I think I'm going to make a slight change to the text based version of this tutorial and then we'll see which one does better because actually I have an idea of how I want to change it so I'm actually going to change it. Anyway let's get started. So, <clears throat> so the first thing is um, we want to, like, what if it, like, right here, we could print, what if we print string pixels? String. <laughs> okay, string pixels. Um, so we'll convert pixels to a string, and then we're going to re dot replace any spaces with no spaces. Run it. Ship it. We're ready. Just zoom out because we'll be ready to see it. <laughs> what an ugly, I guess that's a seven. CS yeah, seven. Okay, so there's our data set. I mean, that was a hard number to, to recognize. Let's just do another one real quick. Um, but you could, you could recognize it still. Okay, there's a three. It's clearly a three. And now the data is even more condensed. We just saved like 30% of our space. Actually more than that, probably half of the space or close to half because there was a space for everything. So we just saved a ton of space. Okay, so what we want to do now is begin to, um, like, so we could do the same thing with the label, but I'm not going to waste time with that. Um, just understand that that's what we're going to do. So now what I want to do is we want to build this training set. So how are we going to do that? So if we look in the text-based version of the tutorial, basically what I wanted to do, or my idea, was to take you know this bit right here so this would come first and then it would all so the number would come first and then it would always be followed with whatever the class of that number is so then the the my proposal is that we could take any number right from the validation set convert it just in this exact same way feed that in as the primer and then the output should be the one hot vector and in fact, we could even leave spaces in that one, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not even going to keep that. So in the text-based version of this tutorial, um, we did convert it out to be to 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 a one-hot vector. Now, since then, and since I did the generative model, I actually did the generative model in a slightly different way. And I'm curious if I should do that do that method instead. I don't think it's going to make any difference the other way. Be it's really challenging. I really don't know. Uh, I'm going to try it because it worked the other way, so I'm going to reverse it. I know that doesn't mean anything to you at the moment, but like I said, I'm going to change the text-based version. So, um, so yeah, so basically our training data will look just like this, only uh, this will be condensed as well. And then you just do that, maybe new line, new line for the next classification, and just keep doing that. So we're going to build a training set that looks like that. So let me, uh, let's do, I kind of want to, since I already know, um, in our MNIST data set, I'm going to do two things. One is we're going to try to classify numbers, and the other we're going to try to go the other way, where we say, hey, draw this number. So I'm going to make a directory called classify. Heading back into our script now, what I'd like to do is, I think we'll keep all of this, but I'm actually going to, I'm just going to delete all of this code, and we're going to write out the new version uh, that we're going to be working with. So I'm actually going to say next batch we'll do 10,000 samples. And I, let's just do it all. Like let's just do all the all the samples. I think it's like I can't remember. I want to say there's only 40,000. We'll just do this and we'll do all of them whatever that number happens to be. So now what we're going to do is I'm just going to fix that and zoom in, scroll down a little bit and begin. So we're going to say with open classify slash input.text with 
the intention to append as f. Then we're going to say for i data in enumerate. And in fact, I'm trying to, yeah, in enumerate um, batch x's. What do we want to do? Well, um, we also could zip these together and then iterate through them. I'm just doing it this way, so I don't have to do that. But that would actually be the Pythonic way to do it. Anyway, you'll see what I mean. Uh, data equals np dot round int batch x's x's i um, and then dot as type int the label is equal to basically the exact same thing. So copy paste. Don't forget to do y's, and you're good to go. Now pixels is going to be data diary shape 28 by 28. Don't forget to put that in its own little tuple. Why did you do that? That's not okay. Thank you, sir. Um, now we're going to say now we convert these to a string. So we're going to say string label is equal to string label. So so this is kind of what I want to change. Um, I'm trying to think if I want to do this or not. I wonder, string label. I think what I would like to do is, sorry, I'm trying to trying to decide how I want to do this. I want to say, I think I'm going to do this. NP argmax the label. And then, uh, I'm trying to remember how you can make, because you could do like MP zeros, ones. Um, like I just want to make a long array of, of what the number actually is. I don't know that this is actually going to work the other way. Um, let me pause this for a second while I think about how I want to make this change. Okay, what I'm going to do is, yeah, index underscore value is going to be np.argmax of whatever the label is. And then we're going to say new underscore label is equal to the np.array of 100 times whatever the index value is. So it'll be, a let's say the index value, let's say it's a 2. The index value will be a 2, and then 100 times that will be just like this array that's 100 twos, okay? Uh, then what we're going to do is uh, we could leave it that way, but I'm going to issue a dot reshape um, and we'll reshape it to a 10, 10 by 10. So that's our new label. And at this point, it should be already as this. So it'll look kind of like this, only this isn't quite it. Um, yeah, I'll just do, we'll print this out. So let's just print a uh, new label. Whoops. Uh, and then we're, we'll it imports time and just sleeps for a very long time, just so it'll pause right there instead of iterating through the data. So in this case, it was a five. So it'll just kind of look like that. Okay. So that's our new label. So I'm going to use that now. Um, so what I'm going to say now is string image. So str image is equal to string pixels. Uh, dot replace and then we're going to replace all of the spaces with no spaces and then we're going to do the exact same thing to string label so string uh, label is string new label and we'll replace them um, again in the text based version I actually just use the one hot array and we convert it and then we get rid of the spaces um, but I'm curious to see the results of doing it this way. I'm, I'm just curious. I, I think it, it's more robust. Um, so when you use the one hot array, it only has like one opportunity to get it right. And if it screws up one, boom, the whole game is over. Um, so I'm curious if this will make it better or not. I really don't know. I don't have the answer to that. We're going to find out. So then what we're going to have is we're going to say classify underscore data. So cl yeah, classify data equals, uh, and then we're going to say, um, I kind of want to just copy and paste this one, but okay. Um, string formatting 
followed by a single new line. Um, and then we're going to have the classification. Now, I'm trying to decide if I really want to have this or not. If I want to do... Because sometimes you want to like have some sort of dictation of, of what what um what's your classification versus what is your um input data because they're both going to be array values i think i will i think 